So guys, about creating a vector index uh, in our MongoDB Atlas, uh, what I will do is I will create a new database in order to show how you can actually do that. So let me get a test DB uh, and collection name and test. So let this create a new collection. And uh, once the collection is created, what we have to do is we have to create this Atlas search. And you know, I already have two index for two of my collection. Uh, if you check here, this vector db dot forex, this is the index name which we are already using here. Uh, if you see in my code base, so this is the index, my new vector index. So this is the same index. So if you see here, and if I edit uh, JSON, you can see this is the index definition which I have, and this is the same which I have mentioned in my article as well. So uh, other than that, I mean, I think they have updated something. I will just walk you through like how to create that. Uh, so for our new collection, which we have created test, test DB and inside that we created a new collection called, called test collection. So inside Atlas search, you have to create the search index, create a new search index. Uh, inside the search index, you have to create, uh, you have to click on this one Atlas vector search. Don't click on this one. Uh, under Atlas search, click on the one which is under Atlas vector search and click on JSON editor and click on next. Uh, now what we have to do is we have to create the collection for which we have to create this vector search. So here you can see this type is going to be vector and path uh, is the path, uh, the, the field name uh, which you want to embed. So in our uh, example, the actual field which we have uh, embedded was this embedding array itself. So I think I can uh, show this in the new one in case you have lost uh, what we have shown you previously. So in collection under vector db under products so if you check here our embedding field is just named as embedding itself. So Whatever uh, name you want to give to this property, you can give it. Uh, it doesn't matter. So it's just the field name. So we can give like, you know, embedding field name or, uh, you know, my embedding, anything. So anything should work. This is just the field name. So we just need to map the field name, whatever you have created. So, I mean, if it is already there, you have to, yeah, I mean, obviously give the field name which is already, you have already created. If it is not there, if it is a new collection, you can give whatever name you want. So number of dimensions. So this is the important uh, aspect of your vector index. I mean, this is the only thing that you have to uh, give importance to actually. So basically, what is this number of dimension means? So if you check on your embedding model, so what we have used is uh, OpenAI's embedding model. Uh, so in this embedding model, if you check, here they are saying by default the length of the embedding vector will be 1536. So which means, I mean, it's just the length of the array. So to put it in simple terms, that is just uh, the size of the array. So when we create this embedding, if you see here, we are uh, getting an array as uh, output, right? So this, this is, the size of this array is 1536 actually. So that is the same number we have to provide uh, when you create a new embedding. So where is the tab? I completely lost that. So it is going to be 1536 for open AI embedding. So why I want to iterate this thing again in case you are using some other embedding model. So you have you don't it is not mandatory you have to use open AI. You can use any embedding model from hugging face. There are a lot of embedding models. So the only thing which you have to note is the size of the embedding model uh, I mean the output size uh, whatever number is they are provided in the documentation you have to use that specific number in your index. So in so in my case I'm using OpenAI so my dimension size is going to be 1536. Yeah, that's it. So similarity, uh, uh, this is going to be the algorithm which is going to calculate your, uh, uh, I mean how the ve vector search is going to work. So there are uh, different things. So I'm using LSTM. Uh, I think there are a couple of other things. I'm not really sure about the name. I'm not. Uh, really familiar with those terminologies actually so here you can see elicitant cosine dot product something like that uh i think i mean people went with the elicitant so that's what i went with so it's up to you if you want to research it more you can do that 
no problem at all so yeah so this is how you have to create a new vector so again this type is going to be vector uh, path this is the field name which you have inside your collection number of dimension is going to match your uh embedding models output array size that's it so similarity is this is the algorithm which is going to calculate your nearest uh, vector things and all so you have to hit next uh you just need to confirm and now you have to create this create search index button so once you do that it will just take some time uh after a while you can hit the refresh button in order to check it is created or not Okay, where is that? Okay, it is not yet done. Let me just wait and pause for the video. Yeah, so now it says that it is active. So uh, under test db test name, you have this vector index name, and you know just uh, you have created a new vector index. That's it. So if you want to edit, I mean, if you see that, you can see that this is your index definition. And uh, one other thing you have to notice this vector name. Why you want this vector name? Basically, you have to use that in your aggregation query. So this is the place in which you give your index name. Sorry, I mean when I said vector name, I mean the index name. So this is the index name you have to give here, and this is the path, the field name of the the field which is containing the containing the embedding array. That's it. So this uh, again, I'm just walking you through. So this is the output we got, and number of candidates handling. So that is it about creating a vector search index and you know querying using only embedding. So uh, what we have covered till now is, is essentially enough in order to create a you know vector search uh, um, I mean API whatever you want to create that should be basically enough. So when I talk about this max stage, what I have created is just a cherry on top of functionality. So I will, in order to understand that, I will open my article and you know that I have created the chart like how this actually works. So for search, I mean for for create request. So what basically happens is when the user create uh, gives a new product uh, as an input. Uh, we are going to create that product. So what we are going to do, we are creating embeddings out of the the name, the product name, the product category and description and we are getting in this embedding array and we are storing new data along with embedding. So basically the product name category and the description along with that embedding array. So that is basically stored in MongoDB. That's it. So that is done. The create, creation operation is totally simple. That's it. And when it comes to search, so what I have done in order to work for the category, identifying category, identifying the prices. What I have done it in order to limit the categories, uh, limit the search uh, queries. Say for example, we have a lot of categories, uh, you know, books, electronics, and uh, you know, whatever you name it in e-commerce. So uh, when user gives a search term, term search text, uh, what I'm doing is I'm uh, calling OpenAI in order to identify the category uh, the user is trying to search and any minimum, maximum price which user has given or something like this. So basically, when you create something, when you make a request something like this, it's just simple. And now when you uh, give something like under $50, and now uh, I'm, I'm getting prices, uh, uh, books, even if they are going to be $80. So this, is, this shouldn't be the case. So that is why I am using another OpenAI's model, which is Chat Completion model, uh, which is this one, GPT Response. So this search assistant, this uh, GPT Response model. So if you are familiar with the uh, RAG terminologies, uh, uh, I don't know what is that. Uh, Retrieval or augmentation. I just forgot the full form of that. Uh, I don't care. So basically, what we are trying to do is. We are providing this prompt in order to identify uh, the category and minimum maximum from this user's search text. So I want to uh, uh, prepare for interview. Okay, uh, show me some books. It just doesn't make any sense. Show me some books under $50. So if we make this kind of query, so this is the actual input uh, which is being sent over here. It's user message. So what I'm uh, telling my chat GPT what is well, so this is the system role and uh, 
you are an e-commerce search assistant for below list of instruction for general reason you should only output json yeah i'm just trying strictly saying it just output json that's it and you know i'm just giving it a list of categories books clothing electronics and identify whether user message matches any of the category else it should be empty string do not invent category outside the provided list yeah i'm just specifically telling that in order to not to invent any new categories only use this set of categories and uh, identify the price range and i'm giving it an output response so this is uh this user system message uh you can find it uh this kind of thing people are using it very often i mean if you take any rag uh, if you have seen any uh, videos in which how people are implementing rag this so this is how you will typically a typical system message for chat chat gpt model this is how it will go and uh, main thing you have to note is the output format instruction for json and this should give me a category only one category i'm saying and uh, minimum price and maximum price and if it is not there i'm just telling it it should give me null okay so let me console log this output json as well uh, i'm just passing it output json and uh, i think i need to yeah call this so now let's see so when i make this search request again and now uh Oh, I do not see that. Why is that the case? Okay, I'm not saved this way. I'm really sorry. Oh, it, it happens. I don't know. I'm not doing control X. Yeah. So now, if you see her output, this and so it has identified the category as books and minimum price. Uh, the, since the user has not given any minimum price, it is it has not identified anything. So. Uh, that is a maximum price. So I mean, if it is so small, I can uh, zoom it a bit. Yeah. So maximum price is fifty. Say for example, if I'm going to look for electronics, uh, show me some. Okay, this didn't work. Uh, I'm totally fine with that. Uh, okay, it, it, the reason why it didn't work because we have commented out the match query actually. Uh, yeah, that's my bad. So we are just trying to go step by step. So I have not included this match stage now. But you know, uh, at least the output JSON you are able to see that um, it it was able to identify the user's query. Uh, the category is electronics and minimum price is zero and maximum price is 50. Say if I give uh headphones under 50 dollars, I mean, say min price will be whatever, like uh, 30 dollars, and it should also identify the min price as well. Yeah, so that is the power of uh chat completion model. I mean, uh, you don't have to use gpt for this you have you can use you are free to use whatever model you want the only thing we need is this output json that's it i mean whatever model you are going to use it's it's that simple so you can use whatever model you want and only this output json we require in this place that's it so from that output output json uh, i mean output response from whatever chat model you are going to use uh what i'm trying to do here is in this match stage i am passing that gpt response okay we have console log here as well yeah but anyways yeah let me do this thing so match stage so match stage is in uh, aggregation pipeline you, you can do some like you know filtering condition whatever you want to use there so here i am passing the gpt response which is essentially this json so i'm trying to get the category minimum price and maximum price and i'm trying to add it over here okay so for category i'm adding this category if the category is there i'm adding that category for in, inside the match stage i'm adding the minimum price and if maximum price is there i'm adding uh less than or equal to and create a conversion that's it i mean this is just a simple match query 
let me add that match stage as well so what we are doing here is we are constructing a match stage and we are adding that in our aggregate pipeline that's it so first we are doing a vector search and now we are limiting the search uh, with our match stage that's it so now if i save this uh, so since it says the under 50 dollars it should not show this 199 thing yeah so basically it seems we don't have any headphones under 50 dollars so that is why we are not passing this say i mean let because i think i have examples only under books that's why uh say show me some books under a hundred dollars so now it will show you fifty dollars till hundred dollars so now you have this javascript book right so this is hundred dollars and now if i do this to ninety dollars and uh, we shouldn't be seeing that javascript book so 50 80 60 and that's it yeah so the reason is because uh we have identified the maximum price the user is trying to query is 90 dollars and that has been added to the mass stage under lesser than or equal to uh, under that condition so that's it so here the match stage has been added so i mean i have added the console log for mass stage as well so if i hit this again you can see like how that match object actually looks like so this is the object which is added in the pipeline that's it so match category spokes price lesser than or equal to 90 and say if you don't want a 50 dollar book and uh, minimum price should be say 60 dollars And now you should see only two books that $50 book should have gone because this greater than stage has been added to the math stage. So like this, I mean, this, this is just an example uh, of category and price. Uh, whatever, I mean, for your, uh, whatever you want to build, say a KB page or a, a context or whatever, like email searching, whatever you're going to do. This is how you can use MongoDB's uh, aggregation pipeline and vector search in order to create a semantic search kind of application. Yeah, I mean, if you're in this part of video, thanking for, thank you, I mean, <laughs> thank you for bearing with me uh, till here and I'll see you in the next video. I mean, and also uh, make sure to like and subscribe if you really like my video. Thank you. Bye.